It's the end of the world as we know it, and I feel fine. Let's get out of here. I. Everybody, it's Aaron from God a Minute. I hope we are flying soon. I am looking currently at the Feast of Weeks, June 16th, in my opinion, is when that falls. Feast of Weeks will always fall on a Sunday, as per Leviticus 23, verse 15. We're going to bounce around. We're going to show you the charts. We're going to review, and then we're going to add on top of that. we got to keep on reminding us of our foundational thoughts. Uh, lots of new guys coming in and asking the same questions. So uh, the original game changer was uh, Feast of Weeks. Uh, is different. The, the 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 word first fruits is different than the first fruits over here. The feast of first fruits in Leviticus twenty three verse ten eleven, and when Jesus rose from the grave is Rashith. The feast of first fruits, uh, when we're talking about feast of weeks, is Bakar and Bakar, and that means to burst from the womb to give birthright, make firstborn, bring forth first child. Here's all the verses talking about all that. So there's your quick review. I've done like six videos now. Please go check the live streams uh, on that. And so we also know that the Feast of Weeks is a Mikra, oh, uh, Mikra Kodesh, a holy convocation. It's a very extra special feast. The Feast of Weeks in particular, as well as the Tabernacles, as well as Unleavened Bread, will be continually remembered forever. It's the three feasts of the Lord that we, that we are brought uh, to Him. So there's that. There's the review there. We have this theme here. We've got Passover to Feast of Weeks. And we have the Feast of Rashith, when Jesus rose from the grave. And then we have the, the Feast of Bakar, uh, of the first fruits. We have God, his rainbow represents the covenants. Uh, a lot of people have been saying in the Book of Jubilees, the covenant was given to Noah on Feast of Weeks. Apparently, the, the covenant was given to Abraham on Feast of Weeks. Uh, legend has it that Enoch was born and died on Feast of Weeks. Legend has it that King David was born and died on Feast of Week. Uh, so basically all the covenant changes happened on Feast of Weeks, apparently. Now it says to count seven Sabbaths shall be completed. Well, look at that. Seven colors of the rainbow. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And on the 50th day, it's the big day. It's the big, big day. So there's your quick review there. And here's a quick review for this. We've got seven Feasts of the Lord. We've got, uh, we've got Nisan 14 Passover. Unleavened bread, feast of first fruits when Jesus rose from the grave, feast of weeks, feast of trumpets, uh, atonement, tabernacles. You count them all from here to here. This is this would be number fifty if that's a jubilee year. And Joshua, son of noon, fifty means noon, fifty means life. Jesus, son of life. Joshua is another name for Yeshua, right? Uh, fifty. Joshua, son of noon. Fifty is the is the value of the the Hebrew letter, and there's there's the big fifty when new life happens. I like that a lot. Another review. We have uh, First Fruits, amazing stuff. James 1.18, as well as, not just that, uh, 1 Corinthians uh, 15, 23-24 talks about Christ being the first fruits, but then us at His coming, as well as uh, Romans 8, which I spoke about before. But we are a kind of a first fruit, uh, right? And then First fruits are only presented on Leviticus uh, 23, verse 17, at the Feast of Weeks. It happens, So it just so happens that the word fruits, its root word is harpazza. We're waiting for the harpazza to be caught up in the air. The word harpazza, the root word of that is aramayo, which means to be chosen to, to take for oneself. And that root word is air, to be lifted up and to raise it, to take it up and away. We get that same root word from bread, aerial. So... We're waiting for the rapture in which our bodies will be lifted in the air, and the root words of fruits and bread is literally being taken up and lifted in the air. You only lift the, the wave loaves in the air at, on the seven Levitical feasts at the Feast of Weeks. You're taken out of your house, you're taken out of your bet, and uh, lahem means bread. So bet lahem means uh, house of bread. And so on Feast of Weeks, you're, the bread is taken out of the house. Bethlehem. Jesus was born in Bethlehem. That's when he was born. Born in the Bet. And he says, I am the bread of life. And we are an extension of him because we are in him now. We are now, our Christ, Christ is our identity. So, so too on Feast of Weeks, they take the house out of the bread, Bethlehem. It just so happens that the Hebrew value of Bethlehem in Hebrew is 490. 490 is, is the Hebrew value for Bethlehem in Hebrew. My goodness, that's that's really fun. Matthew 18, verse 22, talks about 70 times 7. 
how many times you forgive. It's 70 times 7. I actually looked into it, and uh, I, I don't think it's 77. I actually do think that it is um, 70 times 7, yeah, which ends up being 490. And then also, there's this other word in the Feast of Weeks, which I'll, get, I'll show you right now in my Bible, and I'll zoom in a bit here. So uh, let me just do this, and we'll go over here. We'll go to Leviticus 23 now. And so here's here's more of the newer stuff that I'm going to show you. So um, Leviticus 23. Let's see, can you see that? I'm going to make it a little bigger. So here we have a word right here. Um, uh, and you shall count for yourselves from the day after the Sabbath, from the day that you brought the sheaf of the wave offering, seven Sabbath shall be completed. That word completed is a big, it's a big deal. That word completed is uh, from... H8549, and it means, what's the Hebrew word? Let me just pause it and go get it. It means tamim. The, the Hebrew word is tamim. It's a tav, mem, uh, yod, and uh, another mem. So that's a value of 490, right? Jesus tells us to forgive 490 times. The prophecy for Daniel, 490 weeks. Um, 490 is a big deal. And it's been 490 uh, cycles since Rahab was taken out from uh, Jericho. I mean, right? Uh, yeah, when they crossed the Jordan. So 490 is a big deal. And so the name, the word tamim, that's only used once in the whole Old Testament. And it's used only in the Feast of Weeks to be complete. And so the value of this word is 490. But isn't that cool that seven Sabbaths equal 49? Isn't that incredible? Isn't that incredible? So this word is value of 490 when you're talking about seven Sabbaths, which equals 49. Wow, that is just another level that God is just showing us. And let me just show you that chart that I made a while ago. So the word complete is a value of 490. And seven Sabbaths shall be complete is 49. Uh, I did a video on this. Uh, every 50 letters in the book of uh, Genesis, it basically spells Torah. Every 50 letters in the first chapter of Exodus spells Torah. Every 50 letters in the book of Numbers spells uh, Torah backwards. Every 49 letters in the book of Deuteronomy spells Torah backwards. It all points to um, Yeshua. Behold the hand, behold the nail. Uh, Yahuwah, some would say. Or Yehovah, or Lord, or God, whatever. Jesus. It all points to him, and that's an eight-letter eight, eight uh, skip. But isn't that interesting that Joshua, son of Nun... Uh, but 49 is another word for completion. So it's in his Torah. Like, this is like uh, Omer count stuff. This is Feast of Week stuff. Like, look at that. After this, the seventh Sabbath, number 50. It's like in his law in so many different ways, you know? And so we have this count here in, uh, in here. And it's, uh, it's talking about to be completed, right? And that's that word tamim right here. Amazing. And again, it's H8549. And I told you that Bethlehem is, the value of that equals 490, house of bread. And uh, there you go, H1035, Matthew 18, 22. I do think it's 490 because there's a Greek word. I wrote this down really sloppy. But there's a Greek word, uh, G1441. It's only used once, and it's it's uh, hebdomaya kontakis. Where other times when it uses 70 by itself, it doesn't have this thing at the end, this extra little phrase, hebdomakanta. That's when you see 70, but 70 times, hebdoyakantakis. So I think that actually is 70 times uh, 7. I, that's the only way for me to understand that. So we got that. We have um, amazing stuff here. We have also in Daniel chapter 2, let me go over there. This is when the stone is coming to destroy uh, the, the statue. Then the iron, the clay, the bronze, the silver, and the gold were crushed together and became like chaff from the th summer threshing floors. That word is H5784, chaff. And the wheat is separated from the chaff uh, at this time. And uh, this is again, this is the year that we're in, 5784, and it's used right here when it's talking about summer threshing. That is very thought-provoking. 
Uh, we also remember that G616 means to uh, bring forth, and I'll get you that verse. Yeah, of his own will brought us forth. That is G616. 616. Yeah, that's interesting how I'm looking at June 16th. Okay, and also, we have here in Romans, or uh, I'm going to go back to Romans 12 in a second. But we're going we're gonna to take a special little note here in Leviticus 23. In Leviticus 23... Notice how um, you shall bring from your dwellings two wave loaves of two tenths of an ephah. They shall be uh, the fine flour and they shall be baked with leaven. They are the first fruits. Now, the rule of grain offerings, and this is, thank you, uh, brother, for sharing this with you, Dapper, Dapper Dan, and some other people just sh sharing some stuff. I'm like, I'm learning from everybody, man. Thank you for everybody for just throwing me stuff and suggesting things. So, um, no grain offerings which you bring to the Lord shall be made with leaven, for you shall burn no leaven nor any honey in any offering to the Lord made by fire. But, verse 12, as for the offerings of the first fruits, you shall offer them to the Lord, but they shall not be burned on the altar for a sweet aroma. In other words, you should bring honey and leaven. Uh, at the time of first fruits. Now we know that this first fruits isn't during unleavened bread because unleavened bread, uh, that first fruits, it um, you, you can't have leaven during the, the week of unleavened bread. So even though this is the same word rashith um, that you would say on first fruits during the unleavened bread, you wouldn't bring leaven and honey during that time. So it must point to uh, feast of weeks bringing honey and leaven during the feast of weeks. And so also. It says, um, and every offering of your grain offering you shall season with salt, and you shall not allow the salt to be, uh, of the covenant of your God to be lacking from your grain offerings. With all your offerings you shall offer salt. And so, um, also take note, but they shall not be burned on the altar. So, this grain offering isn't a burnt offering. It's not a dead offering. It's, it's like a live, right? And it's with honey. And it's with leaven. Honey and leaven would be an, uh, a very unique thing to feast two weeks. Salt would always be a thing, but salt kind of represents um, like a covenant. It also represents uh, a friendship. I, I think the idiom goes like, if you eat salt in someone's house, it means that you become friends with them. It's like a covenant thing. So, th th the feast of um, weeks, when you offer this um, two wave loaves, which represent us, because it says it's the first fruits. Um, they are the first fruits to the Lord. You offer this particular first fruits, it looks like to be with honey, for sure with leaven, and it looks like honey comes with it as well. But going back to Leviticus 2, when it's talking about um, it shall not be burnt on the altar, uh, wherever it says it, yeah, but they shall not be burned on the altar. So it's like a living sacrifice. And so what do we read? So we need like Old Testament and New Testament to interpret each other. So, Romans 12, verse 1, we see uh, this. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. So, um, that is pretty perfect, that the bread is like a living sacrifice. That's what we are. We're the living sacrifice. We're not being burnt on the altar. We're a living sacrifice. And we're to be presented with uh, leaven, and it looks to be honey. And I'm just going to review this, too, because um, some people aren't getting it. So Matthew 13, verse 33, we have this being spoken. Another parable, he spoke to them, the kingdom of heaven is like leaven. All right, so, so therefore, leaven doesn't always mean sin, because kingdom of heaven is not sin. So leaven is just an agent that helps spread something. There's good good teachings and bad teachings. Over here, it clarifies that then they understood that they did not tell them to beware of the leaven of bread, but of the doctrine of the Pharisees and Sadducees. And doctrine, you can see right here, doctrine means teaching. So leaven is, in other words, it could be, yes, yes, it can represent sin, but it also can represent the teaching. And so when we apply that idea to here, the kingdom of heaven is like teaching, but like it's the teaching of Christ. Okay, so that's what you offer on Leviticus 23 is 
is the teachings of Christ. If you got the right leaven in your heart, you'll be leaving. That's that's my little phrase, a little catchphrase here for this time. So um, we also have some fun stuff to uh, one little thing to note that in Leviticus twenty three verse um, twenty, uh, you know, the feast of weeks twenty three verse like seventeen or so, um, two tenths of an ephah. And if you go back to Exodus 16, you'll see that one-tenth of an ephah equals one omer, which is enough for one day. So, just a little side note that two-tenths of an ephah is a representing what you would have for two days. And so, Christ died 2,000 years ago. Is, he, is this a prophetic thing for 2,000 years from you know when he died kind of thing? Uh, possibly. So, thank you, Brother B, for, for highlighting that. And so, we have this other idea here with with uh, honey and so well, is honey good is honey bad what do we do with with honey and so i think we should just zip over to some books in the bible and show you some of that stuff so we got psalms 19 what does the bible tell us about honey uh where is the psalms here it is i think this is pretty neat too almost there flippity flip flip flippity flap psalm 19 and uh, what do we got here? We're talking about the heavens declaring the glory of God. And actually, the sun and Venus and Mercury are in the center of like the the, tri uh, the hexagon, the honeycomb shape, on June 16th. And the moon is in the Spica harvest uh, star. But what we have here, I want to highlight honey, though. And honey is being, is the description of, of what he, we read here. The law of the Lord is perfect. Converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise simple. The stat statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. The judgments of the Lord are true and righteous altogether. More to be desired, uh, they are than gold. Uh, side note, gold melts at a temperature of 1948. Israel became a nation in 1948. Um, anyway, Honey is being attributed to all the good stuff, the law and all the words of, of the Lord. So honey is, is, in this context, is representing the word of God. And so if you've got the word of God in your heart, which would represent the honey, and the leaven, which would represent the, re represent the teaching of Christ, and the bread on Feast of Weeks, you present with honey and leaven. It uh, looks like you do that according to Leviticus 2, verse 12. So you are presented with the words of Christ and the teachings of Christ, and that's how you enter the throne room. Of course, you have salt with you, but you would always, always, always offer salt uh, with a grain offering. So it's not really a unique thing to Feast of Weeks, although, you know, it says we are the salt of the earth. So there's that too. But honey and leaven is the two primary things that are very unique uh, on, on the Feast of Weeks. Psalm 119 we have the same kind of idea over here. It says, uh, How sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. And so then, again, we have that we have that same idea as honey representing the words, or uh, I would say of the Bible. You know, honey representing a really good thing. And so what does it say in Proverbs 24, talking about honey? Let's go over there. And it says... It says, my son, eat honey because it is good, the honeycomb which is sweet to your taste. And so so shall the knowledge of your wisdom be to your soul if you have found it. There is prospect and hope will not be cut off. So honey is being attributed to, to wisdom as well. So honey is a really positive thing there. And what do we have in Song of Solomon? Very lovey-dovey book, you know, rapture book. Come away with me, my love. Right? Uh, rise up, my love. My fair one, and come away, for winter is past. The rain is over and gone. The flowers appear in the earth. The time of singing has come. But, um, oh yeah, the green. See, green? Green attached to, remember we talked about the um, the rainbow? We, uh, we talked about uh, Feast of Weeks being in the middle of the rainbow. And remember, there's seven lampstands in the book of Revelation. So that means there's 49 lamps. And Jesus stands in the midst of them. So he's the number 50. And he's standing in the middle of them. And here we have in Song of Solomon. I don't know if you can see all this little little green stuff. But there's lots of green words. Green and stuff. Uh, tender. Tender. Green, green, green. 
So Feast of Weeks might be pointing to that. Remember also Revelation 4 was talking about um, emerald. I'll show you that. Emerald is the color green. So when John's in the throne room in Revelation chapter 4, we see emerald right here, right there, Revelation 4. But the reason why I was reading Song of Solomon is um, because of this whole idea of um, honey. And we have descriptions of, of honey. So 411, your lips, O oh my spouse, drip as honeycomb. Honey and milk are under your tongue. Song of Solomon 5, 1, I have come to my garden, my sister, my spouse. I have gathered my myrrh with my spice. I have eaten my honeycomb with honey. The reason why I'm highlighting honey is because you offer honey and leaven on the first fruits only. Okay. So we also have um, Isaiah 7. We're talking about Jesus right now, and it's a prophecy. And this is just an odd little phrase that I never quite understood, but maybe this is why uh, this is what it was said. Therefore, the Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. Curds and honey he shall eat. What? Oh, curds and honey. No, that's interesting. John ate honey as well. That's, that's interesting. Um, you know? So, there's that. Ezekiel chapter 3. We're just going to do a little overview here. And... This is Ezekiel. Go to Israel. They're rebellious. They're, they're a rough group. And uh, I want you to eat this scroll. So he goes, uh, and he said to me, Son of man, feed your belly and fill your stomach with the scroll that I give you. So I ate, and it was my, and it was in my mouth like honey in sweetness. Honey in sweetness. And then we go on to talk about uh, the rebellious house, which uh, Miriam reads, means rebellion. And then the thunders came. Then the Spirit lifted me up, and I heard behind me a great thunderous voice. Well, that reminds me of Exodus 19, when there was a big thunderous voice from heaven. And so I see this as the rapture, because he's brought and carried away, and then there, there's bitterness. And uh, But what does he do after he's been carried away, after this thunderous sound? He sits there for seven days. Wow! But remember all that stuff we talked about? All those seven-day things in the Torah? Seven days this, seven days that. Uh, if you... Uh, didn't read my community wall. Go back about two weeks and read my community wall. Got tons of sevens there. Every time you see seven days in the Torah, it's it means seven years. And so he's he's taken up, and then he sits there for seven days, and then he's told to lie on his side for the house of uh, Judah and all that kind of stuff in chapter four. But um, the point is he eats the scroll and it tastes like honey initially. And so we have a second witness of this whole scroll eating thing and a honey connection. And we see that in Revelation 10, when the mighty angel with the little book came and he talked to John and he's seeing all these great things. And just for the sake of time, I'm going to go right to it. Then the voice which I heard from heaven spoke to me again from God and said, Go take this little book which is open in the hand of the angel who stands on the sea and on the earth. So I went to the angel and said to him, Give me the little book. And he said to me, Take and eat it, and it will make your stomach bitter, but it will be as sweet as honey in your mouth so uh rainbow the rainbow was around its head rainbow and honey rainbow and honey right there and uh, we, we got we got the rainbow around around his head in revelation 10 we got uh i'm pretty sure in ezekiel uh he had some either rainbow visions or something with green he saw lots of colors that's that's for sure i don't remember what it is right now but there might be some rainbow connections in ezekiel and then in Ezekiel chapter 3, there's honey. In Revelation chapter 10, there's honey and, and rainbows. There's a rainbow around his throne in Revelation chapter 4. And then we've got Judges chapter 14. And what do we have here? We have uh, Samson. He marries a he marries a Gentile bride. He marries a Gentile bride. And here, at the beginning of chapter 14... And then it's a seven-day thing. It's a seven-day feast. So he marries a Gentile bride before the seven days. And what does he do? He The whole riddle is eating honey from a lion. And so what we have is a very interesting, you know, correlation to the Feast of Weeks. I'm going to show you another translation. Leviticus 2.12 uh, helps us out a little bit. When we're talking about uh, honey, 
An offering of the first fruits. I'll zoom it in a bit so you can see a little clear. An offering of the first fruits you may offer them, leaven and honey to the Lord, but they shall not go up in smoke on the altar as a sweet and soothing aroma. So again, we have um, honey and leaven looks like to be presented on the feast of first fruits. Honey, representing, um, you know, God's word. Got my picture here. And leaven representing the teachings of Christ. So, if you've got the uh, the leaven of Christ, you'll be leaving soon. Hopefully, Feast of Weeks is the one. And uh, like I said before, we uh, Christ needs to fulfill Matthew chapter 3 when he's going to take his winnowing fan and harvest the wheat and separate the chaff. He also needs to fulfill Revelation 14, 14 through 16, which um, is, a, is a harvest model, kind of a rapture. And so... Looks awesome. Hopefully this is the year. And hopefully this is the year when our, the bread of this earth, the Bethlehem, that w where we are Lehem, are this bread, this, this bread bodies leave this bet and we get transformed. And hopefully this is the year and this is the feast. Hopefully this is the feast and this is the year. Uh, feast of Weeks, man, I th yeah, like I said, I think this is now my favorite feast now. It, I converted it in the last couple of weeks. I think this is my favorite one. And, uh, you know, is this the feast and is this the year? Well, time will tell. I don't know. Um, but, man, I think it's a good fit. Uh, I want to give you a percentage, but I don't want to do that. Uh, I'm going to stay away from 100%, but I'm going to, uh, I don't know. I don't know what percent to give you. But I think it's I think it's a high one. I think it's a high watch at the very least. And uh, we'll see how, how things go. If this all passes, like I think, I think, I think it's June sixteenth for Feast of Weeks. If it, if it's not that, I'll I'll look at the June twenty third. I guess after that, back to the drawing board. I'll either stay on this as a feast, or I will contemplate some other things. But I don't know, man. I, I think this makes the most sense to me. Okay, I love you guys very much. I hope to see you in the clouds. Get tight with Christ, and uh, we'll be seeing you in the rapture. I'll see you in the meeting in the air.